Hello and thank you for tuning in. I'm very happy to say that I'm Nikki Shields and we are back with a brand new series of Straight Talk, the podcast that delves into all things Formula E with Mahindra Racing. Now, when we launched last season, we promised you access to all areas, off-record chats with special guests and chats with personalities. And hopefully we deliver that one for you. And we're going to continue as we head full speed into the 2019 2020 season of the Formula E Championship. Now, I'm sure you're listening from all four corners of the world. You're probably not going to believe where I'm sitting right now. Uh, picture this. I've flown in all the way, especially to Malaga Airport. I'm sitting in the Santa Maria Cafe. I have two special guests with me. We've cracked open the Vissel water. Other brands are available, Beep. of course. <laughs> Product placement. <laughs> and yes, do you recognize that voice? I'm very pleased to welcome back our Mahindra Racing Season 6 drivers. We've got Jerome Dambrazi and Pascal Verlein. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome. <laughs> how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Good to see thanks. you again. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, welcome back, guys. How were your summers? Yeah, great. I mean, vacations took a bit of time off. Uh, I think it was, uh, it was really nice, it was needed, and we're ready to, uh, to tackle the new season. That's why we're here. Mine as well. So we were two weeks in holidays. Obviously, I have a second job as well, which is Ferrari Simulator, so couldn't take uh, too much holiday but it was uh, very nice still. Jerome um, earlier you were just giving us a little bit of advice it's very important uh, you know just in case you are in a situation of a potential shark attack having been <laughs> diving recently in Papua New Guinea this is a 15 minute story earlier yeah. <laughs> that delayed the start of this podcast. Jerome what is the advice you'd like to give our listeners in case they ever come into contact with a shark? Just don't, don't, don't swim away just face the danger all the time. It? Watch in the, the eyes nose. and uh, punch, <laughs> punch in the nose. No, is it? So Just watch it in the eyes. It's not going to come close <laughs> to you, hopefully. <laughs> so we have learned something new today. Well, guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, I know, uh, Pascal, you've flown in all the way from Zurich to be here. Jerome, you've flown in from Nice. But you are actually going to be heading out to the testing track a couple of miles away to give your season six car a bit of a rundown. How are you feeling about that? Uh, yeah, really exciting. You know, before every season, it's uh, a bit of a question mark how the car will feel, what are the improvements, what has been done so far. And, uh, you know, the testing uh, process is starting now. So we have uh, a huge program, what we want to try and improve on the car. And uh, that's a very exciting time. And how does it feel to be racing once again with Mahindra? Obviously, it was a, a rookie year for you last year, but to be signed again for a second season. Uh, it feels great. So Mahindra is a great team and uh, the relationship has been uh, uh, yeah, really good since uh, the beginning when I met Dilbak and also with Jerome because I, I can see him uh, laughing already. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's my second year. So now I've experienced everything once. Uh, most of the tracks I, I know already. So um, that will be a help. Yeah, let's see what we can do together. And Jerome, old timer, <laughs> you are still I'm in an Formula E. <laughs> Coming back from Goodwood, she's calling me an old timer. <laughs> well, you've been in Formula E since the very beginning, so I mean, to to be approaching now season six, it's quite incredible the journey that we've all been on. Well, you and me have been on anyway, and quite a few others. Uh, how does it feel now to actually be joining? Mahindra racing for a second time and entering season six in Formula E. Well, it's so it's so great. You know, I think we had uh, we had a good first season last year. Um, was not what we wanted, what we expected. Obviously, we you know starting the championship the way we did with um, the victory in Marrakesh, podium in Saudi, podium in Santiago for Pascal. We, you know, pole position in Mexico. We really you know started really well, but we did some good work, and there's I think there's a lot of potential, and that's why it's so great to be able to keep the the, the team quite stable to uh, to keep both drivers. You obviously learn to to work also with your teammates, so I'm really happy about that. And then in general, obviously in Formula E, it's now season six. It seems like yesterday we saw a lot of uh, posts a couple of days ago about uh, the first race in Beijing and, and and so on. And it feels like it was yesterday, but the championship has changed so much. Like Pascal just described, we're moving on now in testing our, you know, own powertrains, developing, you know, our cars and so on. First season was very different, but it's all exciting. Before we do start talking about um, what is to come, I mean, let's have a 
bit of time to reflect on last season because you guys had such a promising start to the season. You know, first race, Jerome, you were on the podium in third. Second race out in Marrakesh, you had your third win in Formula E. The third race, obviously, it was slightly bittersweet for you, Pascal, on your very first Formula E race. You didn't get past the first turn, but um, never mind. We'll move on from that because then we went into the third race in Santiago where... You had pole position. It was looking like a win. You narrowly missed out due to problems with energy and you had a second place. Then the fourth race in Mexico, you were on pole, finished in sixth. But basically what we're saying is you had a really promising start to the season. But then from about Hong Kong, you had two DNFs and then it all slightly went downhill <laughs> from there. Yeah, that was a bad one. Um, what happened? Fall, what though, what went no. wrong? <laughs> To be completely honest, I think we had uh, one or the best car in the beginning of the season. In the end or mid-season, uh, you know, we could see a trend that on some tracks we are not as competitive anymore. So um, there were tracks who were still really competitive. It was always a bit of a similar track characteristic, uh, like Monaco or Bern with uh, really slow and tight corners. But then there were also tracks like Berlin or New York in the end, which didn't really suit our car or our setup. And um, yeah, from, from there on, also the competition uh, was really high. I mean, we could also see in some other teams that one race, they, they were in the front and some other races, they were just in the midfield as well. So I just think our car, or in general, at the beginning, we were really, really competitive and really well sorted. And um, obviously, uh, you know, the big teams, they will uh, improve as well during the season. So effectively, you're saying that you thought the bigger teams caught up with you um, in terms of their car performance. Do you think that the same could happen again this season? Well, let's see where we start. We don't know, <laughs> we don't know where we're going to be. I think what, what, you know, the, what Pascal described was that you know, it was really... Um, it got so close since the beginning, but also in the end, uh, in the end, it was really... I mean, a small, small detail would make a, a huge difference the package what we had uh, what, what we had and, and and everything just was perhaps uh, not you know not there all the time like pascal described on some some tracks was uh, was uh, was better for us and uh, and you can't have that at this level in formula e anymore it's not season season 1 or 2 it's uh, we we passed that point and you have to be there all the time and so i think it's just the whole package was perhaps too sensitive to certain conditions um, we definitely know what you know where it's coming from. Uh, we think, at least, um, part of it, and we've been. That's what Pascal was describing. We've been working a lot over the over the summer to better that and to make sure that we're there. In Formula E, every team is there. Every team is capable at one point to win a race. It's can you do it over 10, 10 races? That's sure. the key. So tell us about your season six car. How much time have you spent in it? And are you excited about the package? Two days, no? I, so I have spent two days in the car, but actually... <laughs> they were such wonderful two days, you've forgotten how long yeah. it was. <laughs> Same for me, two days. Um, I mean, it feels, you know, obviously it feels good, but I think we're, you know, we definitely made progress, that's for sure. Uh, obviously, the, the question is always in racing, you know, you don't know uh, how much the others have made. How different is but, it from the season five powertrain? I mean, they, how they, many, they, what are the sort of big changes that we can get excited about? That you can tell us. I'm about. not sure if we are allowed to tell it. <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to say much. It's nothing, obviously, from the outside that anybody would notice. It's something that Pascal and I, I think, definitely have noticed in the past few days. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's, there's there's a few elements that have been worked on, but again, it's, it obviously can't work, can't speak about the specifics. But uh, but fundamentals and 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 things that should allow us to be performing uh, across the range. Have you heard anything, sort of rumours from other drivers or sort of off-the-record chats about how the other teams are getting on in testing and are there any teams you're particularly nervous about? I think some some rumours, but uh, I'm not sure about what have them. You heard? You know? What have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> Blank the mic for a second, tell yeah. me. <laughs> write it down and I won't tell anyone. Yeah, you know, you can buy the information. How much money do you need? Pascal? I just gave you I 10 euros for your for coffee, you. your water, <laughs> and uh, whatever it was. We have a very loyal fan base. I reckon if we all club yeah. together, we can pay you what you need, sir. Okay. <laughs> Let's see next time, then. All right. Give us a couple of names and which teams that um, I, I think it's you think are going to be the most. It's difficult to single out which team is going to be out there in at the front because. I think it's really easier to single out which one isn't <laughs> going to be able to fight uh, for the championship. 
because Which one isn't? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but I think there's so many. There's, there's so What's many. What's happened? They've gone away for the summer <laughs> and they've become all closed. There, 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 there's some, you know, there's so many big names, so many strong teams out there that, I mean, you know, for sure the Mercedes, the Porsche, the BMW, ourselves, um, you know, Techita. You know, Jaguar finished, had a really strong second half of the season last year. I mean, all of us are so close. You have to remember that in Formula E, you can make the difference only at a certain level, you know, which is in the end more an efficiency rather than a software, but and then of the proper power to an efficiency. And so in the end, everybody's working, but the guy that was already, let's say, at 99%, it's, I'm just giving a number like that. He's not going to be able to go unless you, you know you find some funny tricks that you know some teams have found and we've seen with with uh, Nissan last year. Oh, you can you know handle the gray areas of the rules. But if no, if, if none of that happens, then you're going to get around that 99, let's say 99 percent, and then and then what? You're not going to go to 110. That that's you know physically not possible. So everybody that was let's say, at 95 are going to go to 97, and the pack is only going to get closer. So I think as Formula E has um, has evolved, and we've seen it last year, it's only going to get more competitive and more exciting to watch. Excellent. And um, let's have a chat about some of the new destinations on the Season 6 calendar. It's just been announced that we're going to be racing in Jakarta. Obviously, we're going to be going to Korea, China, and we've got the doubleheader in London. That sounds like great holidays. <laughs> China is the same as last year, isn't it? Is that confirmed? I don't... I don't think it has been confirmed. Okay, it's not been confirmed. Okay, so we're going to go to China. We've been to China before. <laughs> that, that, that small country, somewhere okay, in China. Like somewhere. Jakarta is confirmed. Jakarta is a destination. Been there before? I don't know, there's some good diving in uh, I was in, just about in, yeah, to say, in, in yeah, you can yeah. do a little you bit of holiday. You want to do some shark dive with me? No. <laughs> Off the coast of no. Jakarta, Indonesia, got some good dives. Um, yeah, I think Have it's... Have you been to Korea before, to Seoul? I've been to Seoul. Actually, a really cool city. I think it's great. It's a bit of a crazy city. Nice, you know, I can't wait to go and see it again. I went there when I was in Formula One. I did a road show there. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward, uh, definitely, to, to Jakarta. London's going to be a great, you know, most likely winter, summer day, <laughs> rainy... <laughs> It might End be of raining July. in the summer in London, <laughs> but, yes. Um, but it's great, you know, it's, it's really great to be back there. I had only great memories, actually, of Battersea. It's home for most of the guys, most of the teams, so many people for Formula E, so it's really, really great that we're able to go back. It will be a nice way to end the season. Uh, how do you feel about a double headers, though? Obviously, we're kicking off the start of the season in Saudi Arabia and Algeria with a double header, and we will be ending in London with a double header. I personally find them exhausting. <laughs> I mean, one race day format is already exhausting enough. You know, we have to get up at 5 a.m. We're on air for about eight hours. It's full on. I can't imagine what it's like as a driver. I quite like it. So um, you don't get bored. Uh, obviously, the mornings, they could be a bit later because uh, most of the time we need to wake up at uh, six uh, or sometimes even before. So, uh, yeah, the mornings are a bit early. But, uh, you know, I like I like driving. So I like uh, the more races, the closer uh, is better. And Jerome, you just prefer Sunday at home, take the day off. I don't prefer Sunday <laughs> at home. It really depends of the of the you know how Saturday goes. <laughs> you know, fair uh, enough. But uh, but no, I mean they're tough days. They're really tough. But in the end, it's you know when when you have a package and and you know that you can be competitive, then it's two great opportunities to succeed. So no, I mean in the end, like Pascal says, we we, we love racing, and it's uh, although it is tiring, can't wait to be in uh, can't wait to be in Saudi. And how do you guys um, feel about each other? That's weird. <laughs> no, that's great, yeah. really like we're, we're sitting down. Whoa. It's like a sort of marriage counselling session going on right now. Well, you know, it's, it's been a year. The relationship, I feel, has blossomed. I don't know. You're both looking at me with sort of slightly worried looking faces. Yeah, we are, we are still as much in love as the, the first day we met. So, oh. you know, the tipping it, point, isn't it? Three years, <laughs> the tipping point. Like, first year is okay, no? Yeah. What, it's still exciting. It it's three? still an exciting relationship. We're, we're still in the honeymoon phase. <laughs> Getting close to each other. <laughs> banging wheels. <laughs> <laughs> but you are quite close in the garage. You know, not necessarily physically close. <laughs> but you share a lot of intel between each other. You know, you have... Um, I mean, do we do not, it's true that we don't have much space. So there's one, one chair for, for, you know, who gets first to the changing area gets the chair, you know. <laughs> the other one just Sit on top of each other if you want. <laughs> okay, I'm so the sitting guy. 
just to be. Oh. <laughs> I, what, you're, you're, so you're the one that sits underneath. You know. Okay. Well, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, we have well, two chairs. What? I mean, we have two chairs. If, uh, anyway. But you don't anyway. want to use two. You just like using one. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Okay, anyway, moving on. So actually, no, the reason I was going to ask is because I wanted to do a little test. We want to see how well you guys know each other. We've put together a little quiz, shall we call it? Go ahead. Okay. So, Pascal, your car is number... Oh, this is also quite depressing. Your car is the number 94, and you picked it because it was the year you were born. Why did Jerome pick the number 64? Now, I know Jerome is a little yeah. older than Pascal, but I don't believe you're an extra 30 no? years older. No? That would make you nearly... Um, do you know the answer, Jerome? Why I don't you? really know the answer as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like... I, um, there's no reason for it. You know because, what's because, because, No, no, wait, wait, wait. wait. Because, yeah, I just wanted to tell it. Because he wanted to choose the number zero. Exactly. He knows it. And uh, he, he was not allowed to, to drive with zero. I don't know, because of zero... Which, uh, zero emissions, number yes. zero, I thought it was cool. And, uh, and actually, that's not true because a Jaguar, Caca Bueno, had zero on his car. So actually, I need to get back on this because the number I wanted was number zero. And so you went from zero to 64. For no reason. Because, oh, I know because of Nintendo I wanted, 64. No, because six and four adds up to 10. So you took the zero of the 10. And, 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 one, plus, and one plus zero <laughs> is... Uh, one minus one is, be, uh, <laughs> is one. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent story there. Come up with a better one. <laughs> well, I was correct, no? Well yeah, you were okay. correct. One Actually, point, one point. Yeah, yeah, one point. Well done. <laughs> Um, okay, second question for you, Pascal. How many times did it take for Jerome to pass his driving test? Now, I do have quite Which a driving few test? people. Your, your normal driving, yeah, not your race. Not the, no, because there's oh, a which, motorbike one, oh. which was quite recent, which okay. was not better. Okay, no, just your normal, okay, not, okay, not okay. the driving license. Okay, did the you driving speak to my license. sister or something? We have actually have quite a few references all saying how terrible you are at driving. So much so that actually members of your team have refused to get in a car with you when driving or you are the last choice on the list. I can confirm it because I nearly (laughs) died uh, driving one time uh, together with Jerome and Dilbach, so... I get distracted. It's too slow for me. The road is just... Guys, the road is actually good to go slow. Let's let's be clear here. But I'm a bad driver because I'm too distracted. Anyway... (laughs) Okay, so then I say the third time. It, it took him three times. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, Siri yeah, says Siri. yes. Siri says okay. What? what the, okay. Sorry, this are you weird. recording our conversation? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I have, I have to say that the guy was quite really nice to me because in the end he was... He was a, did he know who you were? Was like, oh. he, he was a race fan and, and he really wanted to go see a race. So I obviously, you know... I, I, you bribed... I, no, I didn't bribe him. I just... <laughs> I, know, I didn't bribe him. Did you give um, him tickets? Yes uh, or no? Next question. <laughs> Officially bribed, by the way. Two points. Third place. Third time, I mean. Best drivers. Are you also? Yeah. You know, if you miss it <laughs> once more, do you have, like, you have is there a rule like as a, well in you have Belgium? To psychological. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Watch out at the start. I'm close to uh, a <laughs> crowd. <laughs> okay, so at the Berlin EPRI press conference last year, Pascal, you said that you would pick The Rock to play you in a movie but who would Jerome pick if he had the choice <laughs> uh, first of all maybe we should discuss yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I answer really yeah, I mean wanna, we, I you know you've been working with the out a little bit more over the summer but not quite at the rock yet no sorry why <laughs> well, you know I knew about it. It. <laughs> Yoda from Star Wars that could be Jerome do you know Yoda from Star Wars? I know Yoda from Star Wars, but uh, you, he's a bit older. He has always good advices. Okay. And Pascal, uh, Pascal you know, think I'm like oh, all this old guy. That is just, <laughs> okay, anyway, yeah. but I, I knew. I, you know what? Yeah. You asked me. Someone asked me that question in an interview in Punta del Este a few years back. Maybe that's where you get it from. But so, what's my choice again? <laughs> so the question, Jerome. Oh dear, you have been on holiday. Is <laughs> who would you like to play? Who would you yeah, like to play? So you in don't movie? have the answer. No, you can answer. Ah, but actually, that question was asked to me in Punta del Este in an interview like a while back. So I thought you actually, I thought you had all the answers. Who would I want to play with in a movie? No, who would, would you want you, to play car- you? 
oh. in a movie. So I okay, said, I've been on holidays, guys. I need, I need a coffee. So I said, <laughs> The Rock should play. So if, you, if you travel from Nice, Malaga is actually quite far. It's like I, I, I woke up at six uh, and blah, it's blah, four blah. thirty. Anyway, <laughs> so um, playing my character. Ah, Yoda, yeah, Yoda that's is, a good one. It's, yeah. not, it's not bad. Uh, but no, thanks. Um, <laughs> what about The Hobbit? <laughs> I think that's a yes. yes no, exactly. so um, I don't know. Who would want to play my, me as a character? Uh, my, look, my favorite actor David is uh, is uh, what? I love uh, I love him so much. I forgot his <laughs> name. <laughs> he was the movie he was Oh God, Brad Godfather, Hitch? Godfather. Guys, come on, the Godfather. Not Marlon Brando. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. He's a bit old. He's a bit old, but by, back in his youth, I really, I really like that Al actor. Al Pacino, interesting choice, but fair enough. Um, showing your age there, I think. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Um, Jerome, what? Sorry, is Pascal most scared of? You, ha- you share a common fear, I believe. I and definitely it, and sharks. It, and it's not Bill Back. <laughs> <laughs> sharks. So I'm just going to explain this, the theme, that set the scene at the moment. Pascal and Draymond looking at each other, bewildered. <laughs> and we have Haley, their PR manager, going, Heights! It's oh, heights. heights! You're afraid of heights? You're both yes. afraid of oh, heights. I didn't know that. I hate it. Uh, me too. Are you I both afraid it. of heights? Yeah, I'm hate, I hate it, yeah. You hate I'm heights. Like Do you actually hate heights? We have to go rock climbing yeah. next year. Do They're so scared that. of heights. So I, I still get heart attacks in a plane when it's it starts shaking, so... Oh, really? You know, every week I'm, <laughs> I don't know, I have four flights, five flights, and I'm still, okay, as soon as it starts moving a bit, I'm <laughs> I holding this everything. this is the world's worst quiz that you don't <laughs> Holding <know> my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> okay, aside from you, Jerome, in the history of motorsport, who would Pascal choose to be his teammate? Uh, Lucas Grassi. <laughs> Come Pascal? on, am I wrong? No. Keep your enemies the closest, no? It's like, that, that's... <laughs> you go. Fair, fair, fair point. All right, okay. Um, and what would Pascal say is your most annoying habit? Wow. We don't my have most, all day. My most okay? annoying... My, my the top one. The music I listen to when we're in the car together. Yeah. Yeah. What do you listen to in the car? Just some good oldies. <laughs> <laughs> With a bit of Al Pacino <laughs> on the movies. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, there we are. You both, no, I, might, um, I mean, lost that he listens to music where even no one is singing. So it's like he listens to. Is it called dance music? To it's no, what it, like oh, instru- orchestral, no, okay. In- instrumental, okay. instrumental. But you know, on, ju- the on the piano and uh, oh. on the guitar. And look, guys, I did want to do opera. I didn't know you August. had such refined taste. <laughs> so I don't. That's I don't. I just pretend. Me. Oh, thank you very much. That's a compliment. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> right. So before um, <laughs> yeah. guy's all for you tear your hair out, yeah. I'm going to move on because I think you both have an opinion on this. Now, yeah. I'm gonna, I want to see Pascal's face. Your car names. Because Pascal, last year, every year actually we do this, uh, the racing fans choose the name of the cars via the world of social media. Last year, Jerome, your car was called Falcon, which is pretty cool. Uh, particularly as it was like the Flying Falcon when it rode over Massa in New York. Uh, but Pascal, you had the um, interesting name of... Electro, Mac, Electro, Boat, Electro... <laughs> Mac, Mac Electro, Mac, Electro Face. Well done to whoever came up with that because you weren't too happy, were you? <laughs> I, I still don't understand it. Like, is it a joke or... I don't is it know either. Electro, very Mac, Electro Face. I'm not sure English joke, no? It's, it's an English from a, from a movie the or Okay, well, this is your opportunity to ask the fans to give your car a better name. What tips do you have, fans, who are going to be naming your number 64 and your number 94 M6 Electro? Any tips? Any requests, even? For what mine? You? Yeah. So, for me, please... Uh uh, feminine name, rapper. name. No, no, no. He wants the name uh, of a rapper. No, no, no. The Rock. No, no, no. A girl's name. No, why no. A girl's, a girl's name. name. Why? So why? So okay, explain be, your be, thoughts. I would your like to know. Your car's going to be okay. called The Rock, and your car's going to be called The Godfather. No. <laughs> because you. Ow. The Godfather. Big Al. Actually, my car being called The Godfather. That's. <laughs> that's quite cool. That's not bad. Huh? I like it. I like it. El Padrino. <laughs> no, for me, a girl's name, please. 
you know, I get very close to my car once I'm in the car. And uh, I prefer to be a girl uh, rather than a man or I the godfather. I don't know. I think it's the second time that he's going borderline with his... Uh... So you have a special bond with your, Why? With your car. Okay. I just prefer a girl's name to my car. That's <laughs> nothing with it. Okay. Well, what's the best girl's name that you can come up with? I'm open to that. Well, okay. It's going to be I'm a very open to that. face then, isn't it? Facey. <laughs> and who says Electra face is a girl's name anyway? It could be a boy's name. All right. So fans... The only rule is it's got to be a girl's name. Yes, yeah, please. Can we come up with the most feminine name possible? Can I choose it this time, please, <laughs> Hayley? Is that possible? No, it's the no. fans. Come on, man. Let, let the fans. No, but there, there will be more than one story. name, so you need to choose the right, the right name, no? No, the fans vote for their favorite after ah, they suggested okay. it. Ah, okay. So the most... Okay. Well, or, while you or, guys... Or Dillbag's got like ponder. a voting butt, but, like, you know, just going, like, choosing the names he likes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, while you guys ponder what the name of your car is going to be guys out there come up with something really original that they're going to hate it would be quite funny that's a wrap that's a wrap that is a wrap that is a wrap from our brand new series of Straight Talk thank you so much for joining guys thank you for flying all the way to Malaga Airport to meet me uh, good luck with testing um, I'm now flying you're getting home over again. yourself you're getting, enjoy, over, you're getting ahead of yourself you flew sky. to meet us we didn't flew in to meet you we have a test tomorrow <laughs> Yeah, good point. All right. And you well, tell me so I'm much for my little water. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for staying here, even though actually earlier Pascal went to get his car, drove off, and then had to drive back to the airport. Yes. <laughs> this is where we were meeting. But anyway, that is a wrap. Thank you. We will be back soon with more exclusive content. If you do like what you've heard, remember to subscribe and comment. And don't forget to contact Mahindra Racing on social media with some ideas for the future. Thank you very much. Follow Jerome D'Ambrosio on Instagram. Thank you. And Nick <laughs> Thanks very much. Love you. <laughs>